you want to see my slides, you can just go to tracy.archive.org. That's the top left. Okay, so this idea I've been working on for a while in different ways to use Markdown because Markdown is so much more extensible uh, and looks really good when you view the source. So here's an example. This is like a website, and it's kind of like what you would expect. Um, it's got like tag clouds and categories. It's got blogs, left side, nav, all that kind of stuff. Here's an example post. Um, you kind of can't see the bottom of it, but that's fine. And here's the source of that page, and this is the whole source. If you actually view source, this is the page, and this is what's kind of wild. So this is the whole idea, and this is why I like it. So you can see, if you know Markdown, this is Markdown here. This is the front matter, so it's like title, date, categories, and tags. And then you have a little separator, and then you just have effectively Markdown. So that post that we saw right here, Blog Teeny Update, is right here. And all I have to do is load one little JavaScript file, and it goes from there and does the theme, does everything else it needs. So it basically parses the entire body of the page, splits it up into the markdown and the front matter, parses the front matter, and so on. So that means you can make a really complicated or interesting looking website from just something like this. So some simple uh, uh, index HTML files inside directories. So you have nice little URLs. You can just make the slug however you like. You have your... Uh, your imagery in another folder, wherever you want, doesn't really matter. And then just a couple little files um, that give you an indicator of where your posts are, like a sitemap XML. So what is Markdown? Markdown was actually invented or co-invented by Aaron Swartz in 2004. And the main goal was readability, because Aaron was a hacker and a programmer. What you want is what you're writing to look really similar to what you see displayed, as opposed to all this extra um, junk around it. So the goal would be here, making a website with just Markdown. And you have JavaScript do your theme and do your um, creation of the entire website, do all the accumulation, does search and everything like that. So you can just use GitHub or GitLab or any other place that has a free repository. And you can make a repo and get started. All we need is a sitemap XML or an RSS feed. And I'll explain that in a second. And you can host this, the pages anywhere. So what happens is basically the JavaScript kicks in, and it basically crawls your own site. It parses your markdown, and then it starts parsing all of the markdown of all of your posts, aggregates it together. It converts the HTML. Uh, converts the markdown to HTML using something called Showdown, repaints your page, and it uses local storage in your browser to make things a little bit more efficient. Uh, we use Lunar for browser searching, so for your uh, posts, or posts or pages. And I will try to speed through this a little bit. So again, the idea is make your primary content primary and make it your whole content. That means it's better for archives, better for Wayback Machine, better for longevity. Um, there's no build step. There's no backend needed, which is really nice. So you just need a static file server. You can change your theme or your entire display layout with just changing one JavaScript uh, pointer to in one file. So that's easy. You get good Google SEO. Not great, but it's not bad. And more crawlers, and especially the Google bot, is uh, doing JS rendering. So it's kind of getting better and better. Um, yeah, you could, I'll just try to speed through this. But you know, if you're posting now and you're posting on sites, like where's your content going? Like, don't you want your content? Like, it's your content. You're writing it. You're authoring it. So, what what about GDPR? Like, where do you put all this stuff? So why not put it in a in a GitHub or GitLab repo where your entire website lasts forever? Uh, life is better on the client side. Here's a just a quick example. So there's a YAML port, uh, parser that we can parse. We're, we're loading it from the archive. Uh, we've got a little NPM automatic kind of JavaScript thing going. Here's the uh, showdown markup thing. Uh, this is for lunar uh, solar search and so on and so forth. 
This is for code highlighting. It's very straightforward to load all this stuff and get going. You can do comments, websites. I'll, I'll let you, if you're interested, come back to the slides. Uh, but it's as simple as just writing like what we saw before, just a few lines of markdown, this little uh, script include, and off you go. Uh, and then you can just load it through like a little static web server on your uh, laptop or otherwise, or just post it right to GitHub. Uh, one nice thing is in Safari, you can disable cross-origin requests. So you don't even need a web server. Um, so here's an example. So I took my, my real, my quote, real blog, and I moved it to this format or just tried it out. And you can see that um, it's actually kind of nice because we've never loaded it on this computer. So it loaded all my, my posts to the categories, and it did it quite quickly. So all that's loaded from um, a really basic, simple template. And I just want to show you the search, which is super nice. So if I just do like bike, because I'm becoming a bike nut now, like that's pretty cool. That's all client side JavaScript. So, you know, who needs a search engine? Who needs a, a database? Who needs centralized resources when you have this kind of power? So let's see, go back here. Um, that, was, that example was every post was in one place, which is fine, but we were off at D-WebCamp um, recently this year, or earlier this year, and you can have all your posts like federated. You could put them all over the place. So I have an example where I split it across different um, decentralized, that totally works. Oh, there's a little typo here. Because you're just using a sitemap, and the sitemap is allowed to have URLs that point all over the place. That's totally uh, legit sitemaps. Um, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, this is like kind of interesting. But if you, if you want to learn how to do it, you can follow this little recipe. It's pretty straightforward. So going forward, you could imagine having lots of these uh, sites that all sort of federate with each other. In the current Twitter, v Mastodon, or people are considering, or con you know, wondering about going somewhere else, I think this is like ripe time for this kind of interesting stuff. How could you? Connect, connect them all, have a feed of multiple posts together, and that wouldn't be particularly difficult. Uh, if you just wanted to start with friends and family, you could imagine a little lunar browser search where you could have you know, 1,000 or 10,000 posts easily searchable. And all you need is one sitemap XML, and it could have 10,000 things in it, and it'll just work. So um, at the archive, we like to think of things as uh, good for roaches should last forever. So if WordPress goes away, billions of people could basically just vanish. You know, like hundreds of years from now, they'll just vanish. Because all that's going to be left soon is our digital legacy, right? Uh, so if the average web page is gone in three months, can I get a price check on that? About three months. Uh, why not make your digital life, and pretty soon at some point when we're all gone, your life like a vampire. Make it live forever. Uh, and then I just love this quote that I, I um, saw at D-WebCamp, and it's by Mary Oliver from the poem The Summer Day. Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? And that just really resonates with me. Not only think about that, but like show us. Show us who you were. Show us who you are right now and make it last forever. So act two, um, I threw this in as well. Um, we're working on a new JavaScript project um, at the Internet Archive called the IA project, and we are looking for volunteers right now because we're going to try to make this a volunteer-only kind of, or almost majority, volunteer project. It's at our GitHub main um, uh, site, github.com slash Internet Archive, and it's under the project IA. Um, the overall goal, it's just starting out is to have use our archive APIs to do things like in-browser pages that might be interesting, uh, use a or set up a JavaScript or Dino NPM unified library, and then set up something for command line options. Like we have an art, uh, a really excellent Python IA client right now. We could have similar features in a JavaScript client. Um, the capabilities which is not exclu uh, an extensive complete list here, but our search, um, archive items, download them, get metadata for them, upload items, create new items, and edit items. Uh, as a really just simple example, there's an initial little downloader thing that I set up. Hopefully that's going to work. There we go. 
So here's two different archive org items, and I can just hit download. Hopefully that works, because I'm not sure if that's going to work on this computer. Wait. Oh, I'm in Safari. Yeah. This is a brand new API that only works in Chrome. Let me just see if I can get this. Cause... Yeah. This is using this brand new file system access API, which is pretty wild. So sorry to whoever's computers this is. So I'll just say new folder, AS day. So I'm going to select this new folder, and it's going to give me this nice little prompt here. And bam, that's it. So it's now writing all of these files and from these two different items, and now it's done. And it has stuffed those here. And there they are. So that's pretty slick, right? Pretty straightforward. Uh, so those are the kinds of projects that we're, we're uh, interested in my little Safari. And we hope you will join us. Uh, so archive org items, so whatever would be public right now, uh, you can just download like all at once, and it's resumable. So if you were to walk away from your computer and come back, you could just reload the page, and it, it would pick up where it left off. It's pretty nice. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, you could probably use both. We can make it parse it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, you, yeah. Could you, you just explain what he just said? Yeah. Because it was he, a little hard to know what he said. Thanks. Yeah. He was wondering uh, what, what was I sort of downloading there. And what I was downloading was a list of identifiers from the archive. So archive org items, like an item called commute, uh, so it's just little identifiers or slugs, like the YouTube, you know, hash. Ours are, are more human readable. Uh, so now I'm going to try to call in from Colorado our first volunteer, Jonathan Bryant, who's really got, he just got started and onboarded as a volunteer, um, I think, last week. Uh, and he joins us or he works in the day job at Apple. He's a really cool guy. I met him at DWebCamp. And let's see if I can manage to get him on our screen. Do I have to do anything uh, fancy? Hello? Oh, I hear him. Uh, fancy. Hello? Oh, I hear him. OK, I heard myself. Hello, Hello fancy. Hello? Oh, I hear him. OK, I heard myself. Hello, Hello fancy. All right. Or uh, I won't be able to hear anything until I uh, unmute my Unmute my um, YouTube again. Let me go ahead and share screen. I need to restart Zoom real quick. I'll be I'll be right back. You're trying to make a blog, in the first part of the talk, a blog into a static, static set of files by writing Markdown, running a program okay. over it, and then you get static files. If you call the first, if you get the first one loaded from uh -huh. anywhere static Everybody FTP server, wherever, you have a living blog. I'll get a message if, yes, I'll get a message correct. if I, nobody can. Or a read-only blog. Yeah. So, yeah. Wait a minute. um... Meeting Tracy at, at the web camp was awesome. I'm excited for the opportunity to come in. Hold on, hold on one second, Jonathan. Sorry. Okay. We were talking while we were waiting for you, and I'm just going to let Bruce finish. You're done now? Gotcha. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. He was just killing time. Okay, go ahead. There you go. Start over. Yeah. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks. All right. Um, my name is Jonathan Bryant. I went to the web, first web camp 2022. I had the privilege of meeting uh, a lot of the Internet Archive staff, including, including Tracy. And we got uh, started talking about uh, this, this JavaScript kind of um, library. And, and as she said, 
we're looking at two different applications for it, right? This this unified library that can both be used as um, uh, embedded in, in web uh, websites to kind of decentralize um, that information back in and as a command line interface for, for bulk item uh, downloading. Uh, at the moment, we just have this, um, like an objective uh, search interface. What that means is you can build a query string through um, that will be parsed by uh, Internet Archive with 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 these different kinds of objects. Let me give you like a more concrete example. Our search example that's uh, on the main branch right now uses is looking for um, any Internet Archive. Uh, record that contains a string dragon in any field, but is also of a type e-tree. Let me show you how this works. So, empty default e-tree. So, with the search interface, we paginate through results. Everything's kind of everything's kind of really slick, and we're using this uh, JavaScript iterator to kind of uh, work through each object individually and render onto the page. It's it's incredibly fast, and I'm very happy with the performance. Classic example. Cat videos. You can just imagine like the power that this puts into um, into any consumer of Internet Archive's uh, data. It just place something like this in their site with uh, any kind of formatted any kind of formatted query, and um, they have this almost unlimited access to information and being able to show that off. Um, the CLI itself will use uh, more of a, um, just a string input. And we're looking at, like, this is just search functionality right now. We're looking at extending it to, like, um, e each result that comes back gets extended with additional metadata, and then that can be downloaded in bulk and in parallel from archive.org. We, we will be publishing this as an NPM package on Internet Archive's ESM and... We are looking for volunteers on uh, on building like a, a front end interface, um, like Tracy's download uh, example. That is all I have. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me. I think that's about it. Um, so just join us at Internet Archive on GitHub uh, slash IA. We've got like a discussion board open. You can hit me or, or uh, Jonathan up, and we'll try to get you sorted out. Um, thank you. And this is just a picture from DWebCamp 2022. So thanks. Aw. Awesome. Any other questions before we let? Yep. Check, check, check. Um, yeah, I just want to say the for me, uh, the part of your presentation about the markdown based websites is really, really freaking cool. Um, and uh, I am like a supporter and a really big fan of this website called NeoCities. It's sort of like GeoCities, but like sort of rebooted. And one of the cool things about it is that it's encouraging people to use HTML because it's all in browser. So I can tell somebody, hey, if you want to learn HTML and the basics of static web hosting, it's all packaged into one website. Um, and the founder of that, his name's Kyle Drake, he made something sort of similar, but could I think he just didn't have time to finish it. Um, and I think it would be amazing if NeoCities kind of in browser, like really easy to publish like interface. It's kind of 
already built out, if it had a mode to use this kind of markup-based web hosting and I could just tell anyone, hey, you want to make a static website that isn't on social media, just go here and switch it to markdown mode and just, that would be like really amazing. And he's already on board with that kind of thing, he just hasn't been able to fully implement it. So I just wanted to kind of connect that because that, that would be really cool. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, thanks for that. Um, and that reminds me too, like I, I, I mentioned that I've been using this for, for a while. Let me see if I'm in Safari mode. How do I, how do I view source in Safari outside of developer mode? Is that, I can't inspect. That's funny. But let me just show you this. Um, I'll just pop over to Chrome. So if we view the page source, thanks Chrome for making that so much more easy, um, this whole slide deck is the same idea. It's markdown with a little JavaScript kicker in the front, and that's it. So really, really powerful stuff. Been doing this for years, so <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? I have a question. The, um, getting started URL, you had a slide on that, and I'm looking through your slides now. And I can't find it. I looked through all the other URLs. There's so much stuff. You're a victim of your own success in a way. Uh, but somebody who just wants to start writing pages in these formats goes to what URL? Um, I think it's coming up soon. You could go to page 23, like the way the URLs come in. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it sort of steps you through ah, like the, the basic, yeah. That's the one I was looking for. Thank you yep. so much. Th that's a good the, question. The question was, oh. how oh, you, how big can a search engine be? That you, that, you, that you run in JavaScript on the client side. Uh, download time, uh, but just how big can you make a web page these days? It, it, that's a great question. I mean, so far I've put a lot of content in it, and it's just so fast I haven't really noticed. Um, I don't know, but um, you know, I have like 200 pages on my blog, and it. I didn't really notice it. So, uh, but it, it, it you 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 feed it like the raw text, and you can feed it subjects and titles and things like that, kind of like indexing uh, Lucene or or uh, Solar. And then when it searches, it searches on those fields, like does a key kind of search. So it's pretty simple. It's but fast. So uh, we just tried putting all of the ISBNs we've ever scanned in a JavaScript file. It's 350 megabytes, but then compressed it into 69 or something like that in some little database, whatever. And that just comes down fine. So you can do web pages that are kind of that scale, and you get instantaneous response because it's all client side. So you have to download something. But at least 69, I, I read this morning from Merlin. So it might be quite a bit larger on even phones. That's fantastic to, to hear. I mean, the, the Chrome V8 engine is super powerful, super fast, and uh, our, our colleague, Jason Scott, has shown us, you know, to an insane degree what you can do with, like, emulated software and games in the browser using, like, Wasm or, or similar. But again, it, you know, it's, you can pull down hundreds of megabytes of data and, and garbage into JavaScript with hookins and just loads in your browser in seconds. It's mind-blowing. We have another question. Hi, I've just uh, recently came across Quarto, uh, which is like Jekyll, but it's Python-based, but it has basically YAML declarations and everything's in Markdown. It looked a heck of a lot like this, but I'm wondering if, you know, it's all it sits in GitHub. So, can you con contrast that kind of tool with what you're talking about? Yeah, great question. Was that Octo? Is that the one? Or, okay. I actually Porto. don't. Hmm, I actually don't know that one, but I'll bet you they're similar. Uh, yeah, I've had a website since '94 or something like that. A lot, maybe '92. 
So I've done it so many different ways, and I eventually did it like hand done, then I moved over to WordPress, and WordPress kind of sucks, so then I moved it to Jekyll, and then I moved it finally to Hugo. Um, they're, they're very similar, because you take the mark down, and you have this little build step, and then you make your mark up during the build step, which I think is cool, because then your source is just markdown. So it's very similar, but I slightly object to that build step, because you're kind of giving the keys to something that GitHub or whatever actions has to do, and what if that breaks or doesn't work in the future? So my theory was, hey, JavaScript is like, you can see the source, it's right there, trying to see what that transformer is, is a little more work. Like, I'm, I'm actually working on um, some changes to Jekyll right now through their, their, you know, their community and through the repo. But, uh, yeah, I, I just like the idea of, like, almost nothing. Like, the archive loves the idea of folders of everything you need, the metadata, the data, the media, all in one place and almost no dependencies, where in this case there's just one little JavaScript file which you could farm to anyone. It could switch to anything, so. But uh, I'm sure that's probably similar to the other ones, and I like them. They're better than WordPress. Okay, everybody, let's give a big hand to Tracy. Thanks. And I just had to read something really quick. Um, because, um, as Tracy probably mentioned in her talk, um, uh, Aaron Swartz created Markdown with John Gruber in 2004. And he wrote in his blog, um, for months I've been working with John Gruber on a new project. The idea was to make writing simple web pages, and especially web log entries, as easy as writing an email by allowing you to use much the same syntax and converting it automatically into HTML. Together, we poured over the syntax details from top to bottom, trying to develop the perfect format. And I think we've got something pretty darn great. We've tested it extensively on our blogs, in my comments form, in our emails. It's all worked amazingly well. The format and John Gruber's Perl implementation of it is called Markdown. I highly recommend it. It plugs right into movable type and makes writing entries so much easier and fun. As John was getting ready to release, I did another couple hour project and wrote the software to go in reverse to take HTML and turn it back into Markdown. It's just a first alpha draft, but it seems to handle everything I've thrown at it. If you run into problems, please let me know. And that was HTML to text that he wrote and released at that time. So I just had to kind of stick in that little bit of history while you we were talking about Markdown. 